Okay, welcome back after the break and uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to take another class so that I can finish uh, this, uh, this, this book and the portions. Okay, we'll continue. We were uh, looking at uh, the anointing, uh, chapter 6, and we were talking about, uh, you know, uh, desiring the genuine manifestation by the Holy Spirit and not just giving in to fleshly manifestations uh, just to show that, you know, uh, we are anointed by God or, you know, the, the Holy Spirit is moving powerfully through us. So the example given here we looked at is in Exodus chapter 30. In Exodus chapter 30, I'd just like to repeat that again. In Exodus chapter 30, God was, uh, you know, had told the uh, Israelites how to make the anointing oil to anoint the various utensils, the priests, the garments, everything that's being used in the tabernacle. Um, and this anointing oil, he gives them the, you know, the proportions of what uh, things to mix, what are the uh, material required to make this anointing oil. And then uh, the, the God specifically says that they're not supposed to make, imitate uh, anything so, uh, for their own fleshly purposes, for their fleshly use in terms of making anointing oil or perfumes. Um, and so, you know, we can learn something from this, you know, uh, this anointing, the holy anointing oil in the Old Testament was a type of the anointing of the uh, spirit in the New uh, Testament. Okay, so we see that the holy anointing oil that God had uh, uh, asked the Israelites to make, it was not to be used for, uh, you know, for any fleshly purposes, for ordinary fleshly purposes. Uh, they were asked not to make any imitation of it. Uh, it was to be treated with reverence. It was holy. Uh, so connecting it to the anointing of the Holy Spirit in the New Testament, we see that uh, the anointing that we receive uh, is pure, is holy, uh, but is the anointing flows through human uh, vessels who are not perfect, who are not holy. And, uh, uh, you know, so sometimes, uh, you know, uh, the work of the spirit can be, con con can be contaminated with our own fleshly desires, thoughts, motives, uh, agendas. When we realize that, we need to correctly uh, rectify it uh, and ask God for forgiveness. Uh, but we need to ensure that we don't imitate the anointing, uh, 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 you know, of the spirit uh, in fleshly manifestations and show it as a spirit-led uh, manifestation. Okay. Any questions regarding this? Did you all understand this point? Any doubts? No? Okay. Uh, the other things that we need to keep in mind regarding anointing is, you know, don't copy uh, man-made, uh, you know, styles or manners, mannerisms that show uh, that, you know, you're greatly anointed by God. Uh, so some people can uh, jump, uh, some people, you know, shake, some people, you know, when they're praying, they just, you know, they use their hands like this. Or um, uh, you know they can they can uh, speak loudly uh, you know they run up and down um, and some of them we see you know they're just taking their uh, uh, coats and just throwing it on people uh, just to say that you know the anoint they're just passing on the anointing um, uh, that is on them uh, on the people uh, you know or uh, sometimes. Um, you know, just people are blowing into the mic because, uh, you know, uh, the Holy Spirit, one of the uh, uh, the ways we see the Holy Spirit is like God, when Jesus talks to Nicodemus, he says, you know, the wind blows where it pleases. We do not know where it comes from, where it's going. Uh, so also is the work of the Holy Spirit. OK, uh, uh, so, you know, uh, the the, the the word one of the words of the holy spirit is also pneuma is wind uh, uh, so you know they just blow into the mic uh, uh, 
uh, you know, just creating an atmosphere of, uh, you know, powerful anointing. Uh, sometimes it can just be, you know, people, um, when they're praying, they push people to the ground, to the floor, uh, uh, and all of these styles various people use. Now, sometimes, uh, yes, people do it led by the Spirit, so we, we don't question that, we don't uh, mock them, we don't laugh at them, uh, but we don't copy that, okay, unless the Holy Spirit is asking us uh, to lay hands. So it's not, uh, you know, uh, it's not us trying to push them down so to show people that, okay, you know, we're greatly anointed and the power of the Holy Spirit is working uh, powerfully through us. But if we just lay hand on the person and they just fall under the power of the anointing, then it's the Holy Spirit that is just working in their uh, lives. But the important thing to see whether the person who is doing all of these things uh, is look at the fruits. You know, at the end of it are people's, at the end of the meeting, when all of these things are over, you know, are people's life being touched, are people being transformed, people being saved, people repenting of their sins, or it's just like an emotional thing where people are so hyped up, excited, and they go back the same, they come back next Sunday, you see them at home, or you meet them elsewhere, you see their lives as the same has not changed. But, you know, if it is... Um, spirit-led manifestation it will always bear uh, the fruit of the spirit the fruit will be um, uh, seen okay uh, the next thing is you know um, we can receive impartations from men and women of god we can ask uh, you know many people to impart into our lives to lay hands upon us uh, we can uh, you know uh, ask men and women of god uh, you know to lay hands upon them to receive a double portion of their anointing that is upon them uh, and all of those things but you know if we are not called uh, or gifted by god for a specific ministry you know, no amount of impartation, no, uh, no number of people, you know, number of people who lay hands on us, uh, you know, uh, passing on their impartation or their anointing on us will not work if we are not called uh, for that specific role or that function uh, uh, or the gift that God has given us uh, uh, for us to enable us to fulfill a specific role and function. No, anointing, uh, no amount of anointing is going to really uh, work or help. So the anointing you know that is released into our lives uh, is, will be uh, specifically in line with the call and the gifting you know, uh, upon our lives, what God has called us to do, what He has purposed us to do, what He has envis envisioned for us to uh, do. And accordingly, He will give us the anointing. So if you're trying to do something that is not in your calling, your gifting in the place where God wants you to be, you know, um, you know, we will not receive the anointing that is required, uh, uh, you know, to fulfill that specific role because you are not called for that specific role or that specific um, uh, function. But if you are in your specific calling, your role, your function, you will receive the grace, the gifts and the anointing to fulfill what God has called you uh, uh, to do what he's envisioned for you to uh, do. And uh, as I said, uh, you know, in the previous class, uh, the anointing, the level of anointing that we receive depends on our intimacy with God, our walk with uh, uh, God, you know. Uh, so we should not be just uh, focusing more on receiving the anointing. The anointing will come, uh, you know, as a result of our intimacy with God. Okay, so the key here is intimacy with God, spending time with God. When we spend time with God, you know, uh, we will, um, uh, you know, we'll receive uh, the anointing that we need. Uh, the fruits of the Spirit will be seen in our life. We will uh, greatly move in all the gifts of the Spirit. So all of that will be released. Uh, we will see evident uh, as a result of our intimacy uh, with God. So uh, all that happens in uh, the ministry that takes place uh, as we are ministering is a result of, or an overflow of our intimacy or our time with God. So that is more important, intimacy with uh, God. So uh, the greater the depth of uh, intimacy with God, uh, you know, it's uh, the greater the level of anointing, the greater you will move in the gifts of the uh, Spirit. Okay, allow yourselves to be judged. So can one of you please read 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 29, and, uh, and 1 Thessalonians 5, 20, and verse 21, please. 
first Corinthians 14 29 let two or three prophets speak and let the others judge first Thessalonians 5 20 and 21 do not despise prophecies and test all things hold fast what is good thank you so here we see that you know uh, we need to prophecies um, we need to also judge them. Uh, how do we judge it with the Word of God and with the Holy Spirit? The uh, you know inner witness of the Holy Spirit. So uh, if you are prophesying over people and they say thank you for the Word, but I will go back and test it and ask the Holy Spirit to confirm it. I'll test it with the Word of God. You know, don't get disappointed. Don't get angry with them. Don't think that they're doubting you. But just be happy that you know uh, they're doing what is right. They're doing what the Word of God is telling them uh, to do. You know they're taking responsibility uh, to seek God, not just seeking from men and women, but also from seeking from uh, God. Now this happens. Uh, you know um, sometimes when when people say this to us, uh, you know we think that oh uh, because we are just. Uh, you know, uh, not very famous men or women of God. We're just simple people and we're giving them this word of prophecy. So they're saying they will test it. Uh, don't, uh, you know, uh, feel condemned. Uh, don't feel let down. Don't feel, you know, don't feel that they're putting you down. Uh, but just know what they're doing is right. Um, also, when you become, you know, this great man and woman of God, where you're doing great mighty things for God and flowing mightily in the gifts of uh, word of wisdom, word of knowledge and prophecy, and suddenly, you know, uh, somebody tells this to you, you know, I will go back and pray about it and test it and see it, uh, whether it's from God. Don't get offended. Don't get angry with them. Don't call, you know, woes or uh, the wrath of God on them or judgment of, uh, of God on them. Uh, you know, just be happy that what they're doing is in accordance with God's uh, will. Okay. Uh, the next point I've already uh, uh, explained to you, avoid sens sensationalism and hyper-emotionalism. You know, sometimes uh, just to show that we are greatly anointed, we can scream, shout, jump, uh, you know, we can do all of those things. But sometimes, yes, you know, it's the power of the Holy Spirit that's coming so powerfully. Uh, we can be shaking, you know, we can uh, be shaking inside, uh, but we don't have to you know, do it with our voice, blow into the mic and all of those things, uh, just to show that we are flowing mightily, the anointing, uh, you know, let the anointing speak for itself. The anointing will show itself, show forth in itself uh, in signs, miracles and wonders. When people are healed, delivered, uh, you know, demons flee, so people are delivered, um, uh, you know, people's lives are transformed, people caught up in sin, uh, in weaknesses, in temptations, when they're set free, bondages are broken. Uh, you know, the anointing is happening. So they let the anointing speak for itself. And uh, let's not get into all of these, uh, you know, uh, hyper uh, emotionalism or avoid the sensationalism. It just kind of builds up emotion, tears up people's emotions, but doesn't really uh, do anything. Then it's, it is sad because, uh, you know, we'll be we will be uh, proven by our works. We will be tested by our works. If our, test, if our works are of uh, wood, uh, you know, straw will easily burn, but uh, that's of the fleshly imitations or manifestations. But if it is of the Holy Spirit, then it will uh, bear fruit for eternity and we will see lives transformed. Okay, so that is the end of chapter. Uh, six. Anyone has any questions on the, on the anointing? You can unmute your mics and ask. Any questions? Yes, I have a question. Yes, Rin. Like um, this topic about allow yourself to be judged. Mm -hmm. So if we have a prophecy. Uh, should we um, first approach the pastor or the leader about it, then mention it to the people? Oh, so you're saying in a context where you're in a church setting or in, in your worship setting and then you receive a word of prophecy. 
and uh, you know the Holy Spirit is also telling uh, maybe is is directing you to a specific person uh, then yes you can go and maybe after church service or during the church service if the pastor gives you time you can say uh, I will just receive a word from you from from the Holy Spirit is it okay if I can share that and then the person says yes and then you can share it with that person but if it's a specific word of prophecy for the uh, uh, for the church, for the people of God, then uh, and then you know you uh, you're not there on the on the stage, uh, uh, and maybe if the pastor says, okay, if anyone has a word of prophecy, you want to share it uh, uh, regarding anybody for uh, any specific person or for the church, then you can just go ahead and you know the mic is given to you, you can share it. But if you have anything specifically and uh, you know uh, uh, for the church and there's no uh, you know there is uh, no uh, occasion i mean there is no room made available for you to share it then of course you can go and ask the pastor if you could you know you receive this and then if you could share it and if he says okay you can take you know give you the mic you can speak it then if he says so uh, uh, is it okay if you can share it later on then you could uh, say okay just share the prophecy and then you can leave it to him to uh, you know do it share it when he feels led did that answer your question Rin? Yes. Yes. yes okay do you want more clarity on that or is fine it's fine i have another question okay sure Go ahead. So if a person does not have the anointing in their life, mm -hmm. but um, like maybe uh, one time they get a revelation or something and they start having an intimacy with God, their uh, relationship with God becomes intimate. And um, Sorry, I lost you. I can't hear you, Rin. Oh, yeah. So continuing. Um, so can they um, have the anointing for that particular thing again? I mean, they did not have it before, but um, as they start having an intimacy with God, they get it. I mean, we... Uh we really can't judge who has the anointing and who doesn't, right? Uh, we can't just say it from just looking at a person. Uh, of course, uh, uh, though when they minister, when we see fruits, then we know, yes, it's the anointing of God flowing through their lives. Or when they preach or teach, we know that, you know, people are ministered to, there's the anointing that is flowing uh, powerfully. Or when we see them doing a specific function, even if it's just offering a cup of tea or arranging chairs or, you know, ushering people, you know, people will even receive anointing in those areas. But we really can't judge uh, and say who really, in that sense, you know, I don't know how you're saying a person does not have the anointing and then he has intimacy with God and then uh, I'm not able to understand your question really. Okay, uh, let's say a person um, wants to be an evangelist, and um, but he does not have he or she does not have the anointing, and um, you're saying a person wants to be an evangelist is not an evangelist. Yeah, wants okay. to be an evangelist, and he uh, she starts having. I mean, the relationship with God gets intimate, and uh, so can their um, can they get the anointing? Yeah, their intimacy because yes, why not? Okay. So you don't have to be, uh, you know, in a specific. Uh, uh, we're talking here about anointing for a specific to fulfill a specific function and role. If you're not called for that, 
then no amount of impartation and laying on of hands is going to help you or give you the anointing for that role because you're not in that specific call function that God wants you to be in. But uh, you know, if you're not, if you are just a believer, you're not called for any ministry office. Uh, you know, you're doing something secular. Even a secular job, you receive anointing to fulfill. Uh, you know, uh, the calling that God has given you, whether you're a businessman or a chef or, uh, you know, driver or teacher or whatever. Yes. Or even if you are not in a, a just, a, you know, a, a believer who just goes to church, but you are, the, you know, you are just very close with God, intimate with God and very uh, sensitive to things of God. Yes, you can have the anointing. Why not? You know? You can sometimes be even more anointed than a, than a minister or a preacher or a teacher. Yes. Did that help, uh, Rin? Yes, ma'am. She tells this. And uh, I have a question, ma'am. Like, so, yes. an, so anointing uh, doesn't have uh, to do anything with uh, the ministry and office, but it have more to do with our intimacy and relationship with God, is it? Uh, no, see, the, uh, the anointing uh, we, we receive, just like when God calls us for a specific ministry office, he, we learn that, you know, uh, he gives us the needed grace and the gifts, right? Uh, we learned that in when we were doing fulfilling God's purpose for your life, okay? We also receive the anointing to fulfill that, specific function that call uh, uh, that role but uh, you know to move uh, uh, and of course you know uh, when we are in that uh, position when we are uh, uh, you know God gives us that calling is because we have accepted him as our Lord and Savior we desire to serve him we desire to walk in his ways so that desire is there and sometimes we can get very busy uh, uh, doing uh, that specific function or we can get busy doing that specific role that uh, you know we compromise on our time with God our intimacy with uh, God uh, it does not mean that God is going to take away the anointing and the gifting the anointing and gifting will be there but will not be um, uh, you know uh, so powerful that would you know really uh, uh, bring us to that you know, to that, uh, or uh, should I say that you take us to the next level where God wants us to go with him. Uh, we will be stagnant in the same place that we are. We can do the same things. Uh, we can still be ministering to people. Uh, we can still be doing things that, uh, you know, uh, uh, can help people uh, uh, grow. But we see that, you know, uh, uh, you know, there would be no, we will not experience the glory of God in a greater measure. Uh, you know, people's life will not be transformed, reached. Uh, there will be things like strife and division. Uh, it will just become like a mundane activity, just like we get up every morning, brush, take a shower, do our, our chores. You know, it just becomes, uh, uh, and we can go through the day doing the same things that we usually do with a sense of a lack of peace, joy, no sense of meaning and purpose. And that is how uh, it will be. But we can continue doing that same function. We will continue doing the same. Uh, that's what how churches are. You know, uh, some of the churches are so dead, but they are still doing the same thing. They have the same uh, church services, follow the same format, same uh, programs. Every year they do the same thing. But uh, why don't we see healing, deliverances? Why don't we see people's life trans touch, transform, youth being, uh, uh, you know, transform their lives, children, uh, you know, rising up to be evangelists, ministers, the church moving to the next level where God wants them to be. Why are they still in the same level? It's because they're just still in the same level of anointing. They're not, you know, pursuing the greater, bigger things. They're so hence they're not moving to the next level of seeing the greater glory of God being manifested in their lives uh, because there is no greater sense of intimacy or it's, uh, you know, it's become more like a ritual for them, like the Israelites, 
you know, keeping the law became a ritual more than just uh, more than a deeper relationship with God. And that's why God said, I will remove their heart of stone, give you a heart of flesh. I will write my laws upon your heart and mind. I put my spirit in you and my spirit will help you. Why? Because he realized that they were doing everything as a ritual. There was no sense of a relationship with God. So you can do everything in a sense of a ritual with the same anointing, but not moving to a next level and not experience a new, fresh, uh, a greater level of anointing uh, the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Prince. Anyone else has any questions? Okay. There are no questions. So we will just look. Yeah. I have a question. Yes, Rin. Uh, to be anointed, do we have to be anointed with oil? <laughs> uh, it's a good question. No, not necessary. No, it's not necessary that uh, we need to be anointed with oil. Oil is, uh, you know, is like we said, the holy oil. Uh, in the Old Testament is a type of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. It's just a type, but it's not that only when we are anointed with the oil that you will receive the anointing. You can even receive the anointing by just praying or somebody just laying hands on you. Even if they don't lay hands, they just pray, you can receive the anointing. Yes. So what is anointing? It's basically like, you know, Nina mentioned, it's the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit, right? Uh, so the Holy Spirit can make his presence and his power be felt in different ways, not just through a specific method of anointing with oil. And, and ma'am, uh, I have question like, uh, can anointing uh, be like twins not taken away and uh, if one is a uh, one person have a he is so much anointed and uh, if doesn't if he don't have the character will still uh, he will be in heaven or not okay so uh, you're saying that if a person is uh, can you repeat that last uh, line again please your last question like uh, if we have anointing, mm. but we don't have that relationship with God and we don't have the, you know, we're, we don't have that godly character. So are we still go to heaven or when we go to heaven? Okay. Thank you for the question. Uh, so, you know, for it's not for us to judge who goes to heaven and who does not go to heaven. Uh, that is, we leave it to God. Uh, but uh, how do we know if a person is uh, still flowing in his anointing is just by the fruit. Again, we see it by the fruit. So if the person is continuing to minister and even if, uh, you know, for us, it's a good thing to ask, you know, am I bearing fruit? If I'm not bearing fruit, then which area of my life, you know, I need to set right with God? Am I getting too busy with doing uh, church activities or ministry activities more than you know, just basically my intimacy with God, spending time uh, or with God. Because, uh, you know, uh, overflow of our intimacy uh, times with God is, you know, what we see the anointing just uh, flowing powerfully and ministering in and through us in the open. Okay. So that is an overflow of our intimacy or time with um, God. So we can, we can know if the person is flowing in the anointing still by looking at the fruit. There's still fruit if people's lives are being changed, transformed, people are being healed, delivered, people are being blessed. But if it's just that same, you know, if there's no sense of uh, uh, any work of the Holy Spirit, and we know that, you know, the minister is basically becoming stagnant, not just flowing in uh, the grace and, and uh, you know, the calling and uh, his time with God, his intimacy with God, whoever is ministering. The other thing is uh, whether they will go to heaven or hell is not for us to judge, uh, you know. Uh, uh, it does not mean that because they're not flowing mightily in the anointing that they will go to hell, no. Uh, it's not that because... Uh, 
uh, you know, God is more interested in our character uh, than in our anointing. Okay, character is more important than the anointing. If the character is uh, is right, if we are honoring God, that you know, uh, we are obedient, we're submissive, we are uh, humble, uh, you know, and when we uh, are aligning our will to God's will, uh, and we're doing what is honoring God's side, living like this holy, uh, then the anointing will automatically flow. So God is not more interested in our anointing, but is more interested in our character, in what we do, in the motives, why we do what we do, more than what we are doing. Okay, so when our, uh, our lives are holy, then the anointing will just flow. It's just the fruit that we bear. Did that help? Yes, ma'am. Thank you for answering this question. Uh, ma'am, I have a question. Yes, Sean. Uh, ma'am, when it comes to like being anointed, uh, now, isn't it only possible through the Holy Spirit in this day and age, unlike before in the Old Testament where, uh, you know, people uh, they have appointed by priests, they are anointed by priests rather? Uh, the impartation, yes, comes uh, even now today, you know, people lay hands, priests, elders lay hands and, uh, you know, they set apart people for specific function. We see that even in the book of Acts, you know, when they lay hands on people and set them apart for specific roles. Uh, but in the whole, anointing in the, whole, in the Old Testament is also through the uh, Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is to come upon uh, people for a specific reason, specific purpose, specific time to fulfill that specific role. Once that role is uh, uh, over, you know, the Holy Spirit is to uh, leave them. Uh, but uh, in the New Testament, we are part uh, of the New Testament uh, 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 covenant, uh, uh, believers part of the New Testament, you know, uh, uh, church or uh, the new covenant. You know, we are more privileged because in that sense, we have the Holy Spirit always uh, living in us. But yes, it's not uh, anointing and impartation just does not come because somebody has laid hands on us. Yes. So one means for how the anointing flows into our life, but it basically is through the uh, Holy Spirit. And we see that happening even in the Old Testament. Thank you, ma'am. I'll hand it over to Rin now. She wants to ask a question. Okay. As my question is, um, um, if you have more grace, does it mean that you have more anointing, or um, is it is grace and um, anointing dependent on each other? Oh, good question. Uh, yes, you receive the grace to fulfill a specific uh, function. Uh, that God has called you to a specific role. You, uh, you know, Paul, God says, tells Paul that my grace is sufficient for you. When when he uh, he prays three times for the thorn in his flesh to be removed, so we receive grace uh, in those uh, situations. So um, can grace and anointing uh, be on the same level? Can be, but I'm not too sure about that can flow the same level, yes. Grace and anointing can flow on the same level. Yes. Can be, but I could uh, just find out about that and then maybe uh, answer that better in the next class. Yes, Nina, you'd like to share something? Yeah, so can we say, uh, Pastor, that there, there are different levels of anointing? Yes? Yes, there can be different yes, levels of anointing. Different levels. Yes. So when we, like the time when we just come, I mean, into a relationship with the Lord. Uh, see, we the word says that we are already, since we are reconciled to God, then we become ministers of reconciliation. In the sense, whatever we uh, share with others about what God has done in our life. So that is, can we say that that's a kind of an initial level of anointing? But like you have were mentioning, that the way we grow in our anointing, depends on our intimacy with God. 
isn't it yes. as much as as much as we draw closer to god and we draw from him you know i mean that then so then whatever we do will have the uh, power of the holy spirit in it isn't it yes is that so yeah so yes. because so it, de it depends that way and so then um, also i think we've learned in the previous classes about how do we determine like what you know what exactly we need to be doing and all of that that depends on the grace and also the gifts i think that is what we learned which mm -hmm. come so i mean so how do we develop on that you know how do we grow in that particular level of anointing is it um i mean can we narrow it down and say it is just by our intimacy with god at the same time i just wanted to bring to the the thing that you know in corinthians i mean whether we should place that much importance on the gifts because it says the corinthian church they did not lack in any gift no but but their uh, lifestyle and everything was not meant to be you know of a very good order yes, they, they very were mature. Of, yes and they were i mean the background was that they were worshippers of aphrodite or whatever some goddess and all of that stuff i mean that was a background Mm. but at the same time i mean so they were they did not lack in any gift but you also mentioned fruit so maybe then we need to keep a balance of the fruit i mean uh, definitely by being in uh, touch with the i mean being intimate with the holy spirit will ensure that we are fruitful and we have the gifts flowing can we say it that way Yes. Um, so there are a couple of things that you said. Uh, yes, yeah. slightly as you pointed in uh, the church at Corinth, uh, right. they were all flowing mightily in their gifts. They were very eager yeah. to, when they met together, you know, one had a word of wisdom, prophecy, uh, and they all wanted to speak it and share it. And so Paul is writing to say that you have to do it in an orderly way, wait for others, you know, and things like that. Uh, but then he also says that, you know, he writes and says, you know, you're Im immature. You know, I can't, uh, I have to still give you a milk and not solid uh, food because, um, you know, you're not still uh, growing in the ways of the Lord. Um, yes, so, you know, um, uh, so you're saying that uh, uh, how do we know by the fruits? But, you know, uh, even the word of wisdom, the knowledge and the prophecy that people receive uh, can also be made out of fleshly manifestations, like we are saying. Okay, like we have said, you know, we can imitate it. Sometimes we can just say it for the sake of, because uh, we want to say things. We feel emotionally led and we want to say it. But then if the person who's receiving it and the church is being edified, built, strengthened, uh, testifying to the fact that, you know, uh, what they received was uh, indeed what is the, you know, what is happening in their lives. They received God's purpose, attested to what God was speaking to them, leading to them. So that way is, is you know, we test the fruits. We test prophecies. How do we test prophecies to see if it comes pa to pass? It's, it's aligned with God's will, what God is speaking to us, what God is being uh, imparting to us, what God is being burdening in our uh, uh, hearts. So that way is we test the fruit. So uh, can we say then that the fruit is a better indication of our spirituality or, you know, what do we say? Because there are many people who flow. I mean, not that I have anything. I mean, I feel that we really need to seek after, honestly, the best gifts. There's no doubt in my mind about that. But, but while we were talking and discussing, you did mention that, you know, the fruit is a better indication of our character and of our walk with God. Can we say that? That end result, yes, yes. of whether our, our ministry, our life is actually what is the fruit? Is people being uh, edified, people being built in the word of the Lord, uh, you know, the church is moving to, uh, to the next level, uh, you know, uh, people are uh, uh, rising, raising, uh, being, uh, uh, you know, rising up to be ministers, uh, taking on uh, uh, the roles of, uh, you know, evangelism, of missions, uh, uh, we see, uh, you know, signs of healing, deliverance, uh, bondages being broken, peeping, people being released into their calling, uh, people identifying their calling, their purposes and doing that. Uh, the church is moving greatly into uh, missions, uh, you know, um, ministering to people uh, in the city, around the city, impacting the city uh, and the nations. So when we see it, uh, when we look at all of this, 
we know that there is there is fruit there is evident fruit how, how people's lives are being changed how people are being impacted uh, for the greater building of uh, the kingdom of god it's not just a kind of emotional sensationalism where everybody is just feeling good and coming but you know, there's no life transformation there is people are still the same uh, you know there is still the same kind of envy jealousy hatred pride that is happening in the church uh, so you know in galatians paul talks about uh, and the fruit of the flesh and the fruit of the spirit. What is the fruit of the flesh? You know, if you read it, look at Galatians uh, chapter 5, it talks about all this envy, strife, jealousy, hatred. You know, we see that happening in, in, in churches. Uh, but, you know, if it's, uh, it's the work manifestation of the flesh, the fruit of the spirit will be evident. There will be love, joy, peace. You know, there will be the move of God. We will experience the touch of God. So, yes, there's uh, one way that uh, we can, uh, you know, we can look at is the fruits of any person's work and what they are doing. Uh, sorry, again. So can we say that they both go hand in hand? I mean, you know, as an evidence. So the fruit is definitely important because Jesus said a tree is recognized by its fruit. Yes. And on the other hand, uh, the gifts show the, pre I mean, you, it makes God visible. So, and like you said just now that, you know, we need to see whether whatever we are doing, uh, the, what kind of fruit is it showing? Are people growing from level A to level B or, you know, I mean, is, is it going on or is it flowing? Is it moving? Then we, so can we say like in, in conclusion that both are equally important to seek after the gifts and to, you know, make sure that you're intimate with the Lord. So then, then the, the fruit will definitely show. Yes, what I'm saying is, uh, you yeah. know, uh, uh, seeking God and intimacy with God would automatically result in, uh, you know, uh, the gifts of the Spirit being manifested in our life, the fruit of the Spirit being manifested in our life, the anointing of God being powerfully released. For example, if we are eating healthy, uh, uh, you know, uh, food uh, uh you know it'll show in uh in, in the way that we uh you know uh, in our body uh, but if you're eating junk food it will also show in our body and how much we can do how much we can't do uh if you're not eating healthy uh, food then it will also show in our sickly bodies okay so it's it's just very evident right the same way uh you know uh when we when we not just you can uh we can be in a level where we're seeking God. I want to see God. I want to pray. I want to desire. I desire to spend more time with God. But it's another thing from just seeking to coming to a place where we are really, you know, uh, uh, you know, as being with God, spending time with God, uh, speaking to Him, reading His Word, you know, meditating on His Word, spending time, and then yes, there's an uh, outflow of that. You know, it's just evident in in everything that we do. It's not just evident in science miracles, wonders. It's evident even in the way that we conduct our lives, live our lives, the way we speak, the way we act, the way we uh, react. Everything is uh, the result of that. Uh, in the same way with Jesus, you know, uh, why did Jesus have the uh, greater uh, anointing, uh, uh, anointing without measure? Is because you know he was so intimate with the Father. He always said, "I only do what my Father says. I only say what my Father asks me to. I only say what my Father asks me to say. I only do what my Father asks me to do." And uh, uh, you know, so constantly in tune, in communion with the Holy Spirit, with His Father, and so we see His life. Uh, we see the uh, the fruits that his life bore. Just in three years, the immense impact that he had on mankind. Did that help, Nina? Yes, thank you. So the secret is intimacy with God, right? So, yes, that's spending it. time with God. Yeah. When we pursue the things of God, when we pursue uh, the heart of God, it'll just reveal. Uh, it will manifest itself. Yes. It will yes. make known his heart to people. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay, I thought I'll finish this. Wait, ma'am, wait, ma'am, please, ma'am. <laughs> yes, Sean. Uh, uh, ma'am, you haven't answered about the exam. I'm coming, Sean. I'm coming to your uh, test. Don't worry. Okay, I'm coming. Uh, to that okay uh, thank you everyone for uh, joining class the online students can leave the in-person students i will answer your queries regarding uh, the exam thank you for your patience and uh, thank you for joining class have a blessed weekend thank you everyone